On this week's MetPy Monday, I'll be showing you the basics of taking vertical cross sections and performing calculations with them in MetPy using X array data arrays. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Thielen, one of the software development interns from Unidata from this past summer. In a previous video, I went over some of the basics of how X-Ray works with various MetPy functionality, and how MetPy has a number of useful tools for working with X-Rays, X-Ray objects. Here, we'll show one specific focus of what I worked on this past summer in implementing cross-sections in MetPy for version 0.9. So to start out with, what we're going to end up trying to do is create a cross-section plot of potential temperature, relative humidity, and projected winds with an inset example of our 500 millibar height field and the path that the cross-section is taken along. This example is available in a more brief format at the MetPy documentation, but we'll be going over things in a little bit more detail here. So first, we're going to have our imports, and pretty standard at this point. We're going to be importing Cartopy CRS feature, matplotlib, numpy, x-ray, matpy.calc, our test data function. But our one new function here is from matpy.interpolate import cross-section. And this will be the function that you can use to take a basic point A to point B cross-section through data encourage you to take a look at the documentation for examples of more advanced use cases for cross-sections, such as between multiple points or along custom paths. So the example we'll be using here is the NAR example dataset in MetPy. This is from 1987, April 4th. And so you can see here we have our data as a three-dimensional data set with our coordinates and variables. One thing we did up here that may be a little bit different is we called the dot squeeze method on the data set that was returned by our CF parser. This takes care of the size one time dimension that is present in this data set. So it just becomes a coordinate that we can reference the value of rather than an extra dimension that's hanging around. So here, we'll define our start endpoints. The cross-section function takes them as tuple pairs of latitude and longitude. So we'll define both our starting point, which is somewhere around southern Colorado, and our ending point, which is out in the Atlantic Ocean off of the eastern seaboard. And now we'll take the cross-section. Right here, we just took the cross-section with our basic arguments, just giving it a data set, a start, and end point, so we can get the cross-section taken along all of our variables in the data set. But if we look at the documentation for cross-section, we can actually give the data as a data array or a data set. If we just had one variable, we'd give it as a data array, or if we had a collection of variables, we can give it a data set to interpolate to a slice. We gave our start and end points. And then we have two other additional optional arguments with defaults. First is steps. You can specify the number of steps along the cross section that you want to end up interpolating to. In this case, we just stuck with the default, which is 100, which for most computer sized, monitor sized plots gives you a good representation. There's also the option of interpolation type. Currently, we support two types of interpolation linear or nearest neighbor interpolation, and we default to linear. But if you'd rather have nearest neighbor, then you can select that option as well. One thing here is that you may notice we have Latin law in here as well as data variables. But as you can see later in our plotting section of this MetPy Monday, those will be more useful to use as a coordinate. And since they're referenced to our index dimension, just like our X and Y are, now, we can set them to be supplementary coordinates using the dot 
set cards on our data set. So now they've been taken up here and become coordinates. Now we can do some calculations with this. As referenced in the past video, we need to make sure that our data arrays end up being in the same size in order for our calculations to understand them properly. So in this case, we'll broadcast together our temperature, our pressure, and our specific humidity to make sure that they all end up having the same shape. So they'll work well with our calculations. Here we have 29 corresponding to our vertical and 100, our index along the cross-section path. So now we can calculate our potential temperature and our relative humidity from the data that we have. And we have them here as pint quantities. But it would be useful to stick them back into our data set. So we can do that here. We use the data array constructor to end up making them back into data arrays by giving the data our coordinates, matching the coordinates of the other variable, dimensions similarly, and then attaching the units attribute. Same thing for relative humidity here. So now those are back as variables in our cross-section data set. Similarly, we want to actually work with our projected tangential and normal component of wind. So here, we show how to do that. The key part is this metpy.calc cross-section components function where we simply specify our data in the x direction, our vector component in the x direction, and our y direction vector component. And if you're using some sort of non-default implementation, you can also specify the index dimension along which you wish to calculate. And it returns the tangential and then the normal component as x-ray data rays. Since we want the wind, we specify our u component and v component to get our tangential and normal. Now we can see all of these extra fields that we're going to use added to our data set. So now we can start building up our plot. As a quick basic example, we can just set up our figure and our axes and plot our relative humidity, our filled contour field. If we just specify that directly to matplotlib, and tell it to do a color bar alongside it, we'll get something that looks like this. Now you notice these coordinates go in numeric order, which is a reasonable default, but it isn't what we want for a meteorological plot, especially in the vertical here, because we're used to having log logarithmic and pressure to correspond generally with what we see, rather than just numerically going from low pressure to high pressure, which this is close to the surface. So we can alter our axes using these calls to get something a little bit more reasonable like this. Now that we have that, we can add our potential temperature contour. Here we have a similar call where we specify our longitude coordinate, our isobaric coordinate, and then our data for potential temperature, specifying levels and details about how to plot it, and then here we do a bunch of different little specifications to end up getting little labels for our potential temperature. You can see what that ends up working out to be here, where we get little indicators of what our potential temperature is in Kelvin. Now another thing that we can add here are wind barbs, and these are going to correspond to our tangential and normal components. We end up doing a little bit of complicated slicing over here, just in order to get the actual data points that have data that ends up looking good on our plot rather than being too condensed. So we end up spacing the barbs out so we can actually see what's going on better. So again here, we end up calling our call to dot barbs with specifying our x, our plot x and our plot y as longitude and isobaric coordinates. We end up specifying our slices in order to only select the data that we want to include. And then we do it in our tangential and normal. So this ends up will end up being that any wind that goes in the horizontal direction, like over here, is primarily 
tangential to the cross section. Anything that looks in the plot in this sort of vertical direction, you can imagine that as being more coming into or out of the board, as in it's more normal to the cross section path. So another thing that we can add here is our inset contour plot of 500 millibar geopotential heights. And we can do that here. We're calling our this time x and y, since we're working just in the horizontal, and then our data. Then we get something like this. So we can go up here in the upper part of the atmosphere and cover that up with a small little inset plot to show what's going on in the horizontal. But we don't have the path of our cross section yet. That's what we'll add next. And we'll do that right here with this little call here. So first thing to note is that we specified our points as latitude and longitude, but our data is in projected coordinate. So we want to use the projection object of the data as card by CRS here, and then we want to transform our points that are in geodetic, in this case lat lon, our start and our end, and we'll just rearrange them so we can specify it in the format that we need for transform points, which is all of our x and all of our y versus a start and end point. So this is just taking care of that transposition. And then this little bit over here is just to make sure our order lines up in our argument here. So what this ends up returning, if you notice from here, is that it returns an array with our shape in our data coordinate proje projection coordinates. And so this first part, we will just call scatterplot to point, plot the points. And then we'll call the dot plot to plot the line. And the nice thing here is that we can just call our x and our y on our cross section, because those are still coordinates defined in terms of the dimension index, to go and just plot the exact points of our cross section. And so once we do that, we end up getting something that looks pretty nice like this. We see our points going from our start to our end with our geodesic going along between them. And now one more thing that we can add because we want this to be a nice plot with labels so we know what everything is referencing, we can add our labels and titles. A nice long title is referring to data source, what we're showing points between, when it's valid, the variables, and what it's all showing, and then format dynamically with our content, and then labeling our axes. And so now that we do that, we see the whole completed example of our cross-section with our relative humidity field applied here with our filled contour, our potential temperature lines going like so, our projected winds in normal and tangent are in tangential in this way. Tangential is going this way along the cross-section, and normal is going perpendicular here to the cross-section. And then our 500 millibar heights with our path shown. Again, this content is generally ex available as a brief example in the MetPy documentation. Hope that you learned something in this MetPy Monday on cross-section analysis. Encourage you to check out the MetPy documentation for more details on some advanced calculations relating to cross-sections, and hope you check out next week's Met by Monday.